Welcome to Coding with Time. As you can see on screen, as of today, we're going to be starting with a new app, a castle game. In this game, you have a kingdom where you can build castles. You have gold that you can use to build castles or spend in the shop to buy upgrades for your castles. Each castle has attack power, defense power, and HP. If a castle's HP reaches zero, then, well, it goes away. You have turns, so in this case it was the turn of the barbarians. They attack, they plunder a castle, they diminish its defense and HP. Then when it's our turn, we decide if we want to attack with a castle or fortify it. This exercise, what we're going to do is build the shop, which is a collection of shop items, a protocol. The challenge will be to implement the decodable and encodable protocols given an array of polymorphic objects. Let's start with a quick walkthrough of the code. So our model, we have a kingdom. A kingdom has castles. The castle has an ID, image, name, attack power, defense power. We have turns. We have an outcome. Here are the shop items. A shop item has an item ID, a quantity price, a name, an item type, which is just for private implementation. We'll see later on why. And it has a wrapped item. Here's where the challenge will come where item is a protocol and somehow we need to manage to decode and encode all of this. Right now, the only one conforming to this item is a castle item. This is also another protocol. So castle items are attack, defense, and HP items that we can apply to enhance our castles. Because this is polymorphic, we will be using the visitor pattern. Moving on to the services, nothing new here. The kingdom service is responsible of storing the the kingdom variable. We have publisher and mutating methods to access and modify the data. The outcome service here is the one responsible for determining what happens after a castle attacks, fortifies, or a castle is plundered. The turn service is responsible for just deciding who's next. And here in our shop service, well, we have the shop. And we have commented out the retrieving and saving of the data because we're missing the codable implementation. We have our use cases to access and modify the data. And here we have our scene. So the dashboard is the, is the view where you saw the castles and where we can add the castle through a CTA. All of this is handled through the state. It has outlets. All is done through a collection view with a default data source. Again, nothing new. We have already covered this in previous lessons. Here in the view model, we're just using the use cases and having published bars. We have our two cells, one is the action cell and the other one is the castle cell. So the action cell is the CTA to add a castle and the castle cell is just this one with the overview of the castle. Each time a castle makes a decision or we are attacked, we are displaying this outcome view. This is just a stack view with different entries where we mention what castle was attacked or which castle performed an action and what was the increase or decrease in gold, attack, defense, and HP. Okay, so to start off our model, we need to make shop item codable. As soon as we do this, we're gonna get an error. This is because what item is not codable. And now to perform this, what we're going to do is manually. So for that, we need to create an enum of coding keys. Here we will have a case per variable. What we have to do here is create a container, which will be using the coding keys. And then what we're gonna do for each of the value types that we have is just asking the container to decode from that value type for a specific key. So item ID is string and we ask it for the key dot item ID. Quantity will be for int with the key quantity and so on. For item type, we will also have to make the enum conform to codable. And then comes the time for the wrapped item. Now we're gonna give it a default value of attack item just because I want to use a function to organize the 
decoding of this. For that, we need to initialize each uh, variable before using self. Now, in here in this function, you will see why I have an item type. Using this item type is just a private implementation to know when decoding to which type to decode the item that was encoded to the wrapped item key. So if you will use a switch, and depending on the type, we use one of those and decode it. For the encoding, the first part is just like the decoding. Since we have value types, it's just creating the container with the coding keys and then just encoding each of the value types with its respective key. Here for encoding, the only thing we need to do is a switch for the wrapped item and then we just use cases for casting to each of the types that we know it can conform. So for attack item, you just cast it to attack item, and if that's successful, then we just encode it using the same key. Now, if we go to our shop service, we can just comment out the code we had in retrieve and save data, and we're good to go. Now, let's move on to creating the shop scene. We will start with the shop view model. Here we need the use case to get the shop item. So for that we'll create a use case that retrieves the shop item publisher from the shop service. Our view model will be transforming shop items into shop item view model. Uh, this one will have a name, price, the image name, and since we can be passing an image name or an SF symbol, we'll be having a flag. Now let's create a presenter that will do the transformation for the view model. Since each castle item will have a different shop item view model, we will be implementing the castle item visitor for our presenter. Now you'll notice that for name, price, and quantity, we cannot access it through the castle item. So for that, we're going to use the data from the Visitor design pattern to pass in the shop item, which does have this information in common. What's going to be changing between each of the entries is going to be the image name. Now I just realized that we were missing adding the item ID. So that's what we're going to do here and then make the 
correction in the view model. Now that I think about it, we're missing another presenter, which is the shop item presenter. Here we're going to use the other visitor product that we have to visit each of the shop items. Right now we just have one type of shop item, which is castle item, but implementing it like this will make it much easier to add other types. Okay, so now we have our view models, item view models. Now we just need to add the methods to the view model that will modify the data when the user performs actions. Um, oh, here I'm missing a use case to get the castles. We don't need to actually listen to the publisher since we just need to know the castles that we have right now. For that, we're going to create a use case that will retrieve the castles from the kingdom service. Okay, so route. Right now, our view model is ready to determine if an item is a castle item. We can also now perform an action with a castle item and a castle index. And we will also provide the castle names to display on the view. Now again, since we already cover UI collection view and developable data source, we're going to be just skipping to different parts of the development here. We have our shop view controller. It has a collection view, a data source. We're going to be configuring the view by adding the collection view. Besides the collection view, we will have a title and a cancel button to dismiss the shop view. Next, let's create our UI collection views. Huh? In this case, we're just going to have one, which is going to be a shop cell. As usual, we will be adding the view model property to our state. Let's keep the part where we add the sub views. Here we have everything in a stack view where we have 
an image for the item. We have the quantity label, the price image view, price label, and the name of the item. Moving along, let's now configure our data source. We now have our cell registration. We have the method to update the data source. Now, the only thing that's missing is listening to changes in the publish bar in our view model. When this publisher returns a value, we update the data source. Now in our dashboard view controller, when the user taps on the shop button, we just present the shop controller we just created inside of a UI navigation controller. What we had done with the stock view didn't have the outcome we were expecting, so we changed our implementation to NS level constraints, and now we have the view that we desire with the quantity the name of the item and the price. Now let's do something when the user taps on a item. So what we're going to do when the user selects a castle item is we will present an action sheet. The action sheet will have a cancel button and a button for each of the castle names that we have. When the user taps on one of the buttons that represents a castle, we will just pass that index to the view model in the function that we already have for this. In our view model, we're missing a use case that decreases the gold amount after we purchase a shop item. Let's try running. Let's go to the shop. Let's look at a small attack and purchase for the first castle. And you'll see that now it has 20 more of attack point and we have less call. Because we have an iPad implementation, we cannot leave it at that. We cannot present a, an action sheet with just the other view controller as it was. We need to assign a proper representation controller, source view and source rec. For that, we're gonna be using the UI collection view cell. We will get that collection view cell given that we have the index pass and we'll just pass it on. This doesn't affect at all the iPhone implementation. Now here, when we run the iPhone implementation, let's go to shop, let's tap on a cell, and you'll see how a popover appears over the cell. And that was all for today. Implementing the codable protocol in a family of objects that conform to the same protocol, it's pretty easy. I chose a simple challenge so that I could have time to introduce our new Castle app. 
This is the app that we will be using in the near future where we will hopefully be able to add a widget implementation as well as a watchOS integration. Hope you like this one. Bye.